we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Toe the Line with me, George Glinski. Delighted today to be joined by Paul Hills, who fights at BKB29 on December the 3rd against Nathan Leeson. Paul, how are we doing? Yeah, afternoon, George. Yeah, I'm good, thanks, mate. Good, good. Before we go into your next fight, BKB29, back in the Indigo, just drop the camera there, perfect timing. Yeah, America. Um, you're out there in Miami, Trump Hotel, the Trump National. Nice little swanky gig you got there. What was that like? How was the experience going over and fighting in America for BYB? Yeah, no, it was powerful, George. It was, um, it was. I don't want to say corny or sort of cliche, but all the hard work we've done over the years and me pushing on so late in my career, as in I'm 41, mm. Um, it felt like it was a sort of Jim and Joe sort of give me a bit of recollection to what I've put into the company. Um, BYB was stand up out there, mate. Uh, all the companies involved and sort of all the, uh, what's the word? So, you know, like the sort of people that they have working for them, this, that and the other. They was all brilliant and so welcoming and accommodating to, uh, you know, to our needs. Um, yeah, they put me in the right place to go in and obviously, uh, we lost the fight, but obviously I, I was in a you know I was in a good place. So we got cut open early on, and I sort of just was panic fighting, just to try to get get to him, which left me open for more. You know I'm not stupid. I know exactly what was happening in there. Um, I think I sort of knew how bad I was cut. Uh, I'll go on drip rate, George. You know if it's sort of drip, 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 then I'm in trouble. If it's drip, drip. Drip, then I'm all right. I'll make it out of the round. <laughs> um, yeah, and it, it was bad. It was bad in the second round, but I, it wasn't really clocked too much until the end of the second round when the referees see in the corner. Um, so I was pretty much fighting one hand because I was trying to, you know, keep my left hand up. And, and then that just for every sort of bit of, you know, skill out the window, George, and it just goes down to grunt and just trying to see it out and take my chance if it comes. Um, yeah, but respect to Adam. He, he played his part in, in executing his game plan. Um, and, yeah, lessons to be learned from me, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it was great. It was great. BYB was great. Fighting in the Trigon was great. I loved it. Loved the clinch work, the dirty boxing, the sort of uh, the grittiness of it. Um, and the company as a whole was just absolutely stand-up, mate. So, it was, it was brilliant, George, you know? Definitely. Are there any concerns? Obviously, coming into the negativity, yeah, straight off a very positive answer. But that's your second bad cut, as you say. Forty-one years old. It's it's the usual line of questioning. But are there any concerns coming into this Nathan Leeson fight that that could be opened up again? I know you did particularly well about stopping that Jack Arnfield cut opening up in the future. Yeah, same thing, mate. I so I just treat I, I treat I ain't stupid, yeah, George. I've got even though people might not think it, I've got half a brain cell when it comes to looking after myself. Mm. And um, the same thing with a Jack Arnfield cut. I know that at the time, I didn't have any friends as such in being here a bit at the time. And I know that potential opponents were saying, yeah, but he's fucked now. He's going to go, he's going to open up every fight. Fucking touch wood. That fucking touch wood. That Jack Arnfield cut has never opened up again, George. You know, even two fights after Jack Arnfield, there was blood on, on the scar. And I looked at Paul and he went, you're cut. And I went, fuck, is it open? And he wiped me, he wiped my face, it weren't my blood. I don't know, yeah. he was on camera, I actually got cold. I was like, it's not my blood. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy because I thought it would open up. And even in that fight there with Alan, um, out, out of the three or four cuts that I did have on my face, there was one that was like in that area. And uh, of course, I've panicked when I've seen on the camera in the TV thing that the cut, like, like the blood was around that area. I just thought it would open back up, John. And it, and it hadn't opened back up. So, I mean, and that was down to the skull. That was one of the worst cuts you're ever going to see in competitive sports. Um, it was like an axe wound, you know. And I treated that well, George. I only had five weeks off after that fight, mate. You know, that Mitch Turner fight was five weeks after that cut. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to be that stupid this time. Um, my level of opponents have gone up since then. Um, so, you know, listen, I know they're looking for the cut. So why are they looking for the cut? I'm trying to fucking knock them out. So that's pretty much, you know, a fighter's, fighter's sport, mate. You know, it's, it's, uh, Leeson's probably got scar tissue. In fact, I know he's got scar tissue because of the amount of fights he's had. I, I don't know any particular times he's been cut, but I'm saying, you know, he, he's got a few, he, he's experienced in the bare knuckle, which means his face is going to have had the experience as well. He's going to have cuts there, you know, he's going to have scars. It's part of the parcel, George, yeah. The thing is, uh, the thing the difference with me is, 
it, it's not a creditable thing. If anything, it's a pretty fucking dumbass thing to say. But busted open or not, I've still got the same intent. Yeah, if I'm pretty with not a mark on me, I'm trying to take your jaw out. Yeah, if I'm cut open to fuck, can only see through one millimetre of one eye, I'm still trying to take your jaw out. You know, it, it's not... It doesn't, you know, I'm, I'm not fearful of that. I won't go off on the back foot and try and stay out of the way and stay out of trouble. What's the point of being someone's fucking punch bag? Yeah, I'm in there to win. So if it's all going against me, guess what? I'm still in there to fucking win. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's no concern of mine, George, you know. It can, listen, let, 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 let people think, say, do what, this, that and fucking other. I, I've learned it in life, George, that all the... If, buts, can, should, would, might, this, that, and that. It don't mean two shits to anything, bro. On that night, it's going. You know, it's going off. And, and neither of us know what way it's going to go. And, uh, yeah, I'm down for it. <laughs> I mean, you've continued that high level of opposition taking on Nathan Leeson, a man who's formerly held a world title. He's a very, very high-level bare-knuckle boxer. I know over the last couple of years, he's had... Well, an interesting return. I think he's, he's missed weight multiple times. We'll talk about that in a second. But just your overall reaction. And, and was there a discussion about taking a step down in opposition or were you pushing for that, that upper echelon? No, I mean, I come back from America, George, and I probably was a little bit on cloud nine. And I phoned Jim and Joe and I just said, look, I, I only, like, I'm, I'm happy just to keep fighting in the tribe. And uh, when you're over here, it's saying, I said, oh, the show's only fucking weeks away. You know, you won't be able to take that show with the cuts, et cetera, et cetera, which is fair enough. And then I was like, right, well, you know, I want more fights abroad if the opportunity comes up. And Jim and Joe was like, well, look, at the end of the day, Paul, like, we've got a lot of fighters on our roster. You know, we sent you to Miami, you know, not not we sent you to Miami, but you let us down. But you sent to Miami, you're off the back of a loss. Mm -hmm. You know, you lost, obviously, when, uh, uh, what's his face that stepped in? Tonkin stepped in, short notice. Um, I'm off the back of two losses, George. I still want to be fighting, you know, chomping at the bit of the titles. I spoke to James Kennelly. Um, he's now fighting for a world title, which obviously means he's got to vacate the British. If he don't win the world title, he's still going to be British. Um, so, you know, I want them fights. You know, uh, I've got no concern just off the back of, you know, a couple of losses. My career's been, my, my career's been up and down, glove boxing pro and professional bare knuckle jobs. And I fucking love the ride, mate. You know, like, now I, don't, I feel like shit I'm off the back of two losses. It doesn't matter that... One of them was fighting the night and the other one was an opponent I knew nothing about. You know, it's all bollocks. Yeah, it still happened. It's all set in stone that, you know, I'm a loser at the end of the day. The last two fights. Um, but the thing it doesn't do, George, it doesn't kick me down personally. You know, I've still got as much drive and as much strength in myself and positivity that I've always had. Um, and I'm here December the 3rd to fucking flip the tables on the head. You know, Nathan obviously seen my last couple of losses, probably seen a lot of ways he can beat me. Let him fucking think that, you know what I mean? When he's in the ring with me, it's a different thing. And uh, I, ain't, I ain't coming there to make numbers, George. I ain't coming there for an easy fight. I picked Lisa and, you know, come up. There was a lot of talk. Um, I don't particularly think that I was the top of his list of opponents to fight. And he, he weren't even in my radar, no disrespect to him. You know what I mean? He, he weren't even in my fucking, in my conversations. It come up. Um, obviously, Jim said the winner of this is straight back on con uh, title contentions. Obviously, Nathan's got pedigree. Um, this is my 11th bare knuckle fight. Um, so the winner of it is deservedly so should be put on for a title or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, bro, I'll, I'm talking shit a lot, George. Just carry on just baffling on like anything. But, yeah, man. Yeah. How familiar are you with Nathan? I know that you trained, uh, well, you, you sparred a few times down at the Home Fitness Factory, which has been somewhere where he's frequently done his camps. Um, have you ever sparred each other before? What, what, what sort of familiarity? Uh, no, I mean, I know Nathan, no, no Nathan well. We, we sort of nutted up well in the lockdown shows because obviously there was only a few people there. Uh, and we was, we was quarantined, you know, going into the venue. This house, we was sat in the same room for fucking hours. Uh, met him there properly. He's a, he's, he's a good fella. Do you know what I mean, George? I can't, you know, there's, there's nothing I can say, oh, I don't like this about him, don't like that about him. You know, whatever, he's just been a normal bloke to me. I've been a normal bloke to him. So it's a mutual respect. I know quite a bit about his fighting because obviously I've watched a lot of BKB. Um, and I, I obviously had quite a lot to do with Queensborough back in the day as well. And I know from my quite a name on that, 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 that spectrum sort of thing. Um, 
so yeah, I know what he's about. But I'm close to the fitness factory, Simon Dan Fitness Factory. You know, it's not just I spar there now and again. It's every camp I've been in, I'll go up and do some time. Um, or at least for the last three or four camps. I'll go and do some time up at Birmingham, just a couple of days, uh, a bit of sparring, a bit of tech work with Simon. It is a bit awkward. It really is because Simon's a very respectful person. I respect him and his team down there massively. Um, Nathan being part of his team, you know, I've had to step back, George, and just sort of like let it be. Um, I don't know if Simon's on Nathan full time sort of thing. I, I don't care as such. I'm not. I'm not going to make myself busy. That doesn't bother me. Yeah, Nathan could be trained by anyone in the whole world, um, and it doesn't make a difference to me. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that familiar with him like that on a personal level, George. You know. Well, from what you know of him as a fighter, what is your expectation coming into fight night? I should suppose it's going to be the old cliche. He's, he's, he's the boxer. I'm the brawler, George. Fucking, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I've heard it all fucking before and and whatever. You know what I mean? Like, people think they know what to expect out of me. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Yeah, I don't know what's the next punch I'm going to throw is. So, fucking good luck to them working it out, you know. Um, go on the last fight because I know why I was fighting like that and go on the fight before because... We all know what happened. It's just, it's total, like, it's not irrelevant to me, George, but I just, I'm not going to get tied up on it, bro. What Nathan's got in skill and and, and in footwork, this, that, and the other, I bring something else to the table, you know? And, and there's times in a fight when people's styles will cross and one will, like, one will eliminate someone else's style, um, you know, to them, for them to get the advantage. And, and, that, and that's what it's about. You get what I'm saying? Um, I know he's an intelligent boxer in the ring as well. Like his ring, his sort of ring, ringmanship, is it called or whatever, George, where he, he knows where he is, mate. And, and, you know, I'm under no illusion, George. Like, I'm not looking for, yeah, 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 he thinks it's all good or move that head the football. Yeah, I'll fucking do this. Shut up. I'm not that fucking naive. Do you know what I mean? I, I know what's what, bruv. Um, but also, no, I'm going to win, George. Like, and, and that ain't me trying to fucking tell myself that. I genuinely, genuinely believe that, you know, w- w- when the fight was laid on, like, I looked at it and I thought, right, right, get this victory and I'm moving on. And, and, that, and that was it. It wasn't a thing of, oh, fuck, if I lose this, what about this? What? Well, nah, that that ain't, you know. And there's, there, there's, there's not many, but there's still a couple of fighters in BKB but, you know, if it got put on the table, I'd think, fucking hell, like, well, I, don't, I don't know about that, I don't know about this. Well, I probably wouldn't think that. But I should, I would have that trial of, like, you know, maybe that's a bit much or whatever. Um, yeah, Leeson, I respect him, respect what he's got. But, you know, I, I, I will class myself as, as being capable of beating him. Do you know what I mean, George? And, and that ain't mugging him. That's just, I know, I know when it's, when it's my night, George, and, and I can turn on what I know I can do. Yeah, it's gonna fucking shock a lot of people, including myself. And uh and the results will speak for itself. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Perfect, perfect ending before we go into to sponsors and thanks. So we've got them written down, which is beautiful. Uh just list them up for me if you can. Right. So I've got to shout my sponsors because it's a really shitty time at this minute, financially out there for everybody. And we have lost a couple due to everybody, you know, having to pull things in. And I totally respect that. And I hope that all their businesses, you know, pick back up and, uh, and you know, and, and get successful. Um, but there's people that are sticking by me at the minute. Uh, like I say, I have to really credit them because I know it is out there. And uh, team already and myself wouldn't be able to carry on this journey, you know, like we do. I wouldn't be able to give everything to my kids and looking after them if I didn't have my sponsors. So we appreciate as a team and me and my family would like to thank, you know, thank all of them, George, you know. So we picked up a new sponsor. It's uh, Alpha Capital Group. Um, I believe they're a trading company that... uh, does all that trading stuff. I'm not even going to bore anybody with it. I am not that man to know about it, but hit them up on Insta, Alpha Capital Group. Um, they'll explain everything and get you involved if you want to be it and uh, make you financially better off. Um, and then we've got Total Waste Management, long-term sponsors. Um, we're actually in the new year. We might have to split um, companies. So I want to just thank them for everything they've done and obviously the ongoing sponsorship at the minute. Uh, BA Surfacing, um, I can't, 
uh, I, I don't really need to say much. Man. They know how, how, how special this uh, this sponsorship is to me and how much they've really supported me through the last two fights. Um, it's credible where credit like can't even be explained. Yeah, thank you, BA Servicing. Wolf Building Supplies as well. Fairly new to the team. Been there for the last couple of fights. Brilliant company. These are all on Instagram, by the way, or Facebook. Um, yeah, brilliant company, really good at their work, class craftsmanship, and uh, they've been supporting us and they're going to carry on through, you know, the journey. And we've got Time on Tattoos, just done a new tight, they've just done a new tattoo that will obviously be revealed on Fight Night. Everyone will see it. Uh, it's quite a powerful statement, but it is what it fucking is. Yeah. And the Subs National don't give a fuck, and we all know that. <laughs> um, the CMOS Gel. Um, one of my supplements that I take and a very, very credible supplement. I can't explain it enough. Google it, find out what it does, then hit CMOS, uh, CMOS gel up on Instagram. We've got Black Sheep Dispensary, my CBD sponsors. Um, ongoing support's brilliant and their product's brilliant as well. You've only got to Google them, Black Sheep Dispensary. We've got Ringmaster Boxing, obviously that's HQ. Um, Ollie Pinnock down there, he, he goes on and, on and above his duty as the gym owner for me. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just it's priceless. Just uh, what what uh, you know what the ringmasters boxing has done, and yeah, full credit to them. And Boxfit UK, obviously, all the merch. We've got some new hats, which is they're absolutely sick. I'm really impressed by these that come out. And uh, that get any war ready merchandise from there. Anything you want to do with boxing anywhere over the UK, uh, contact them because they're uh, the best boxing supplies out there. And that's about it, George. Thank you very much for your time as always. Thank you, man. Thank you. Well, best of luck on December the 3rd, unfortunately, again. We don't work well, on luck. Man. Don't use that word in my fucking interviews, all right? <laughs> luck. Fuck <laughs> luck. Break a leg um, on December <laughs> the 3rd. I'll be breaking sack. Won't be my leg, bro. <laughs> 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 unfortunately i won't be there but i will be watching keenly on uh probably after the chisora fury fight because that's where i'll be oh, oh you there yeah nice one yeah. George. really appreciate your time mate and we'll speak soon no problem thank you everything totally right cheers George. Bye, man.